Good morning. Okay, we're not live yet. Good morning. No, okay. Good morning. It'll come on here shortly. They did warn me that it's a little slow. There it is. Yay, good morning. Yes. Well, it is so good to see all of you, and you all just are probably wondering what in the world is this little blue band on your chair all about. Are y'all, do y'all have it on yet? No? Put it on. Put on your band, okay? Don on your band. And I, I want us all together to read what this band says, starting with the not for sale sign, okay? One, two, three. Not for sale. Hear it from this side. All right. R2R in one voice. Hi, I'm Gloria Toady, and I'm here to share about R2R and one voice. And some of you might remember me from last year. How many were, were here last year remember me? Probably 95% of the hands should go up, right? Okay, and you know what I'm coming to speak on? And I'm so thrilled to be here this morning. And I understand that you all have had Missions Week, where you've been hearing testimonies and things of what's been going on in God's world and in your lives, and how the kingdom of righteousness and the kingdom of unrighteousness are colliding, and we're raising a standard because that was good, what God has called us to do, right? Well, I'm here this morning to tell you about an exciting opportunity that we have as Christians, as ambassadors, and every time I get to stand up here and look at you all, the student body, I'm thrilled. And why? Because I just know that you all are the next generation of leaders God is raising up to impact this world. And how many of you know, if you are um, paying attention to what's going on in the world, boy, God needs you more than ever, right? 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 God needs you more than ever. You all are not. Are you all awake? No. <laughs> you all are honest. Okay, we want to really pay attention to this cause because I know in life we can get into a routine where it just be, life can become so routine and so mundane to where we just go, okay, check that off, check that off, check that off. And when it comes to the topic that I'm going to bring to you today, and it's the topic of human trafficking, we want to sit up in our seats and we want to square our shoulders back and we want to pay attention with everything we've got because individuals' lives are hanging in the balance. And heaven and hell are two real places and God wants us to make an impact. And so Running to Rescue, the short name that we've given it is called R2R, is coming to Texas Tech once again on May the 2nd. And on May the 2nd, we're going to stand up as a community to let others know and to let the victims most importantly know that we're paying attention. Because I believe as an advocate on behalf of young individuals such as yourself, no one should be enslaved, and no one should be enslaved to sexual slavery on top of that. How many of you have, have come through your history classes and you've been taught through your first grade classes onto where you're at today currently about slavery? How many of you all know what slavery is? We all know what slavery is. How many of us know it's wrong? We all know it's wrong. Well, do we know that it's happening more and more? And um, the things that are happening are astounding. It's becoming epidemic. And so... Uh, we're going to do something about it. On May the 2nd, we're going to gather as a community, and we're going to go over to Texas Tech, the Texas Tech campus, and we're going to have a race. And it's going to be a fundraiser for an initiative that is coming to this city to help minors. And minors, when I say minors from the age of, because human trafficking has no regard for age, it is perverse to the core of its being. It comes from, I believe, the core of the, the hottest place in hell, honestly. It is just ugly when you really pull back the layers of what is happening to innocent children, boys and girls alike anymore. It is astounding to where it, we would think that um, human trafficking was happening to individuals in third world countries only, but it's not. It's come across our borders and it's here. And if we think that you all are even exempt from this, think again. It is amazing how creative these, these perpetrators are who are supposed to be protectors and now they have become predators. And they are now trying to uh, befriend anybody that looks like an, a, an, an individual that could be um, used for their gain. And I'm going to show you a video, and I want you to see the mindset of what has taken place across the land in, in, the, in the hearts and the minds of God's people, who they should be worshiping God rather than they are worshiping the enemy. So I'm going to have Jordan just play a very short uh, video for you, and I want you to listen with everything you have. And I want you, before you listen, I want you to say, 
I must whisper a prayer to God and say, God, what's my part to play in this? What's the piece of the puzzle that I bring? And I want you to listen. And then after we're done, I want you to, t- I want you to say, God, I want to do something about it. And I hope that is awoken, uh, aw- that you awaken that within your heart. And God, you allow God to awaken that within your heart after you hear this. Jordan, if you'll play that. Because they were there. Ask uh, if you the favorite type what you like, or dark or brown. You ask it, and they the girl come to you. It's like you order a pizza, something like that. You can compare it. The CIA would say that the sale of women. We're not talking pornography, and we're not even talking about prostitution. We're talking about just the sale of women constitutes the third largest industry in the world. Dozens upon dozens upon dozens of girls in a village of 3,000 people that are raped five to 10 times a day for money, for the pleasure of some guy, foreigner coming to our country. If they kill her, if they harm her, they don't care. They do it with a blink of an eye. Just like, like that. I don't know what it is. 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 I can tell you this, that I can't get the pictures of those girls' faces out of my mind still today. And I, I don't imagine that I ever will. Okay, you heard the fella, and he said, you order them like you order pizza. Does that make you mad? And I'm asking the girls in the house. We order the girls like we order pizza. Today I want brown hair. Today I want blonde hair. Today I want, I mean, good night. Like I go over and I order pizza, and I say red sauce, white cheese, sausage. I don't think so. And so for every man in the house, you're the protectors. And we are never to be predators. And those guys have it absolutely wrong. And so why does R2R exist? Unfortunately, we have to have fundraisers to protect young girls. And R2R is all about that. And why also on our bracelets do we have One Voice? One Voice is an, initi- an initiative that's being formed even now. We, this morning I got a first email of the rendition of the house, the safe house that's coming to love. Because when we think that's only happening across the land, it's not. Girls are being trafficked here in Texas as well. And so the stats are astounding. It's just amazing of the, the um, things that are going on out there. And so one voice is coming um, to Lubbock. One voice, why one voice? Because we'll, all of us will stand together as one voice, as a community. And I know there are a lot of different churches represented in this room alone. And so I want you, before the day is out, stop at that table when I get done here in about another five minutes. And I want you to pick up one of these posters. I want to take, you to take it to your pastor and, I say, and tell him, I want to do something about this. God stirred my heart in chapel, and the mission field now becomes Texas for me. I'm, I, it'll, it'll be in my heart. And so I want you to put this up, and I want you to make announcements at our church and rally our church body. And so um, we also have another pledge sheet I want you to pick up because each of us have 10 individuals that we know, family members alone, neighbors alone, that want to give you $10. They're begging to give you $10. They just need you to ask them. I want you to take this sheet. It's a pledge sheet, and it's called 1WON by 1, and it's called a 1 by 1 $100 pledge sheet. And if you all will take these sheets and you will go ask your friends and your circle of influence for $100, one by one, just 10 individuals, to give you $10 so someone else could have another chance at life. And I'm going to read you just a little little bit of an excerpt from Megan Norman. Megan Norman was a little youth growing up. She uh, went to school here. And um, in 2011, Megan Norman was arrested over at the Overton. She's been a federal person ever since. Because she had just turned 18, she was, she was um, convicted of a crime. And now she has come to know the Lord. And her, sad, her story is so sad. She's going to get out in August. And she's coming back to our community. And we're going to embrace Megan Norman. 
because Megan Norman was a victim. She didn't realize that, and now she's using her voice to stand against injustice. And this is her story. I grew up in a home with a lot of violence. I watched my mom get abused of all her boy, from all her boyfriends. I saw her use drugs and alcohol, and had many, she had many men in and out of her life. It was, a diff, it was a difficult for my mom to keep a job, which is why she often depended on men. I had lived with my grandpa my whole life, and so has my mom. My dad had been in prison my whole life, and, my, and the only father figure was my grandfather. He passed away when I was 14, and that was the year of my life started to go downhill. Well, unfortunately, Megan Norman hit, ran away because of just the, the not having a, a place to belong. You all are so, so fortunate to have the parents that you have, the, the guardians that you have, the, um, I know we even have it for an exchange students, to have your host parents. And to be able to attend Trinity Christian Schools, I would say you're the cream of the crop. So today I want to call upon you. You're the leaders of this next generation. I want to call upon the leadership of this student body. I want to call on you, call on you and I want to have you step up. I want you to take the charge. And I want you to rally this team to show up on May 2nd. And I know there's a lot going on in your lives. And I know there's a lot of things going on in different sports. So if you have an obligation, that's under, I understand that. But if you are available on May 2nd, let's get up. Let's be over there. And you can walk. It's, a, it's going to be a chipped race. It's going to be a 10K, a 5K, and a family fun run. So I want you to go home, and I want you to take your bracelet. I want you, that to, I want you to wear it, because at least till that date. I will wear mine throughout the entire year, and you know why? It's a talking piece. You know how many people have asked me about what in the world is that bracelet on? Today, it's blue. Last year, it was red and white. The year before that, it was red and white. The year before that, it was black and white. I've worn it for quite some time. And it becomes a piece that I use to speak on behalf of those that have no voice. They're not nameless. They're not faceless. I believe their cries are deafening in heaven for this saying, will somebody please help me? These girls and boys are becoming um, commodities, and it is wrong, and God wants to do something about it. So I call on you. And so I want you to, t I want to tell you the tail end of what um, happened to Megan Norman, how she's been restored. But this is still part of her story. When I was 15 years old, I thought prostitution was normal. Something got broken. From the age of 14 when her grandfather went away, she was looking for, for acceptance and love. She was looking for something. She never found it, but she found it as she ran away. Then she ran away, finds herself on the street, and if you all know anything about human trafficking, within 20, 24 to 36 hours, that individual is looking for you. You are, and they are going to befriend you. They know they, they are so good. These perpetrators are so good at their, at their craft, and they hang out at malls, and I'd say be aware. Be aware, girls, when you think that really nice-looking tall guy comes up to you and says, Hi, wow, how are you, darling? Beware. And I don't want to put fear in you, but I do want to tell you, be very cautious who you allow to become your friends. Make sure that you do not allow someone to isolate you. That is the number one thing that you have to be careful with with an abuser. Do not let them isolate you, okay? And so here is Megan, and she's telling us that she thought prostitution was normal because no one had told her otherwise. Prostitution is as wrong as rain. It is wrong. Do If we remember our, church, our Bible history, remember what God did to the Israelites? He brought them out of bondage. He pulled them out, and he said, you're made for more. And so together as a community, on May the 2nd at Texas Tech, we're going to be telling the girls as they come to One Voice, we believe that we will become a model. One Voice will become an initiative. It will become a model for, for cities all around this nation to envelop and to, to do something. I believe that a lot of people want to do something about this cause. They don't, do not know what to do. So God's going to use us as the model to go out and say there can there's there's something that can be done and it's one step at a time and it's asking God to, to go before us and to be our rear guard. And now here's Megan. She's saying, my final message to everyone out there is that you're not alone and that you are loved. This young girl came to know the love of her father, her one and only father. Jesus Christ. She came to know that. And now she has a brand new life. And we'll get to meet her here shortly. I, I've never met her. Um, I've only met her through text and through the testimony of a girl that chose to disciple her. Um, her name is Peggy Galanos uh, from eLife. And she chose to, to embrace this young girl and because she felt God saying, Peggy, what are you going to do about that? It's not enough that you've heard her story, that you've prayed for her once or twice. Befriend her. Befriend her. So we know God is up to something. And she says, um, don't be afraid and don't ever give up. And she's going to walk a very hard, hard road when she comes back to this community. 
I can only imagine what the enemy has planned for her because she's going to be inundated with all her past. Do people recognize her face from the news because she was plastered all over our news, um, meet, with the news media and all over our news uh, papers and whatnot and still on social media. You can pick up her, her go Google her name and there she is. And, and she'll have to register as a sex offender. We're going to do everything on our part to change that law because these girls have been victims since a very young age and they didn't know any better. And I, I look over here to this group here, and I look at um, just the, 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 the beauty of just the, the youth, and, the, and not that any of you, were, you're, you all are just a little bit older when you're seniors and when you're in junior high, it's just a little bit different, right? There's just a little bit more of a, of, a, of a divide. And I look at the innocence, and I just think, wow, and how you all still depend on your parents. And we all do, we, it, all of you do, well, all of you all do as students because um, you'd be wise to because it is, that comes from God and his word. But I look at you all, and, and, and if you did not have an advocate such as your parent and this, uh, the amazing staff at this school to just embrace you and to give you direction and instruction, I mean, we would just be left just a wandering genera generation, right? Not knowing right or wrong or, or just um, questioning right or wrong. Well, when you don't have that foundation since you're very young, like Megan did not have, and Megan's story is multiplied over and over again, and you saw the faces of the little girls in, I'm not sure, Cambodia, I'm not sure where he was at. Um, they don't have the opportunities that we have. And... Um, that's where One Voice is going to come in. We're going to embrace these girls, and we're going to nurture them back to health, and we're going to put them on a platform, and we're going to use them. And God has plans to, to just um, show forth that he can redeem and he can restore, and he needs our help. Okay? So who? There's my alarm. I did it. Yay. I'm going to let you all go to your second class. But before I do, I'm going to have you all go visit the table um, and pick up a, a flyer, pick up a poster, uh, take your band, take the one by one. And I know there are a few of you who have parents that own your own business. And if you do, I have a sponsorship form that I'd love for you to take to your parents and say, Mom and Dad, is there a possibility that our business could support and be a sponsor of R2R and especially One Voice? And so I want you all to go and get one of these packets as well if that is um, that pertains to you. Okay, so who's going to show up? If your calendar is clear, who's going to show up on May 2nd at Texas Tech at 8 o'clock? Oh, come on. Who's going to? Okay. Let, okay. I don't think you all heard me. I'm going to let you go. Who wants to show up to do something and be the hands and feet of Jesus in this generation to let little boys and girls know that they're not alone and their cries are being heard in heaven? Heaven is, I, heaven's a noisy place right now. Heaven's going, come on, come on. Who wants to show up? Okay. All right. Okay. The rest of you, we are praying for you. We hope that you're not coming because you're involved in something like sports. Okay, God bless you all. Wear your, your bracelet proudly and go and share um, what we've shared with you today, okay? Thank you so much. All right, guys. Before you head back to class, please pick up all chairs except for the last four rows and be sure to pick up a bracelet and all your forms on the back. Have a great day.